In this video, I'm going to review this pen from the perspective of an artist that uses fountain pens for drawing. This is the Kaweco Lilliput in the copper finish. This pen, for full disclosure, was provided to me by Goldspot Pens, a wonderful online retailer with whom I'm now affiliated. I have a number of pocket pens in my collection, but this one makes them look like Mont Blanc 149s. It's tiny even compared to my smallest pocket pen, the Kaweco Sport Brass. And while I love portable art materials and probably spend too much time thinking about how to put them together into that perfect set of portable supplies, I'm not a fan of miniaturization. Cute little palettes, such as this one, with barely any mixing area, or tiny travel brushes that you can barely hold. Nothing against those that enjoy them, but to my mind, the enjoyment people get from them comes from their cuteness and not from their usefulness in making art. So what on earth inspired me to give the Lilliput a try? Well, for a long time, I was convinced I would never get the Koweco brass either. It was entirely too small, the ink capacity was laughable, and the nib seemed a little bit dry. Then when I finally got it, I changed my mind completely. For one thing, I under underestimated the convenience of a pen that you can throw into your pocket or onto a messy studio desk, a pen that you don't have to worry that you're going to scratch up. I also didn't realize that what I didn't like about small pens was not their lack of length, or girth for that matter, but that they were so light and insubstantial, and that the weight and balance of a pen can compensate for its size. I also didn't realize that the ink capacity and nib performance of the Kaweco brass could be improved with two simple hacks that you can see in my review of it. After I fell in love with this pen, I began to wonder how small a pen could be and still be comfortable, and if the same hacks could be applied here, and also if my love of the teeny tiny Kaweco Sport brass could be extended to the teensy weensy Kaweco Lilliput. This pen is available in a number of metals, aluminum, brass, and steel. Aluminum was the least expensive version, but it's much lighter. Once I realized from using the Kaweco brass that a pen's weight can substitute for its size, I wanted the version of the Lilliput that was made from the heaviest material offered, that being copper. I could also have gone with the steel version, which has a very pretty torched blue finish, but I wanted a pen that acquired a nice vintage looking patina. I've had this pen for about two months, and already the grip section looks like an old penny, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this pen ages and even acquires a touch of verdigris. As you can see, the pen is very small and the section is quite narrow, but as an artist I regularly hold drawing and painting implements that are even narrower, such as this plastic crow nib holder or this little watercolor brush. Both these implements are easy to get used to, so the smallness of this pen is really no problem at all. And for those of you that say, well, I only use regular fountain pens to draw, so no way I'm going to get used to anything this narrow, my answer is, you probably used a big ballpoint for decades before discovering fountain pens, so don't tell me that this pen, whose section is about the same, is too narrow for you. I actually like the fact that the barrel of this pen is uniformly thin, because I like to move my hand up and down the barrel depending on what kind of stroke I need, and don't like having to readjust my grip. It's not that big a deal, since I use plenty of pens that have big differences between the grip section and the barrel, but it's nice to have, especially in a pen this small. Wall pocket pens are designed to be used for short periods of time, and are assumed to make compromises to comfort for the sake of size, I don't find this pen uncomfortable at all. It's very well balanced, and considering that I regularly use drawing tools like this and like this, this pen is perfectly good even for extended use. Now let's take a look at the performance of the nib. This is an extra fine, but I find it to be almost needlepoint, finer than even some of my Japanese extra fine pens. This is great because it allows me to very lightly sketch in my drawing and then gradually build up my values with many layers of crosshatching. As is to be expected with a nib this fine, there is quite a bit of feedback, but it's not unpleasant or so scratchy as to eat through your paper even when you go over your lines quite a few times. The other thing that's nice is that the flow is on the dry side, so the ink dries quickly, an advantage if you plan on using this pen in combination with ink wash or watercolor. And though this is a steel nib, it actually has quite a bit of bounce to it, so with pressure you can tease out a surprising amount of line variation, particularly because the lines start out so thin. All in all, while nothing special, this nib is perfectly functional, good for all kinds of drawing purposes. I should also mention that the reliability of this pen is quite good. I've never had any hard starts with it or experienced dripping or burping of any kind. Now let's talk about a few downsides. Unlike the semi-polished finish on the Kaweco brass, the copper here is highly polished, which is attractive but makes the pen more slippery. This, combined with the thinness of the grip section, might make the pen feel unstable in the hand for some people. The threads help stabilize the grip, but I have a tendency to hold this pen well above the threads. 
The slipperiness could be remedied by roughening up the pen with steel wool or some other light abrasive, but this is probably something I'm not going to do because the pen is just so pretty. Another slightly irritating downside is that, like the Sport, the clips are sold separately. With the Sport, however, the hexagonal cap keeps it from rolling off, so you don't really need a clip. But with this pen, it will roll off your desk instantly. An additional issue is that the copper finish is very smooth, and the clip will slip off very easily. The pen is so small, however, that you probably won't use this clip, other than as a roll stop. Besides the slipperiness of the grip section, the biggest downside of this pen is its poor ink capacity. Like the Koiko Sport, it uses short international cartridges. However, unlike the Koiko Sport, it's too short to use this little piston converter. While carrying extra cartridges around is probably the most practical option, they're wasteful, and I prefer to use my collection of bottled inks. So what to do? Well, you can always use a syringe to refill your cartridges, but that's pretty messy, and you can't really carry a refilled cartridge around. Now, a semi-satisfying solution already exists. It's this discontinued squeeze converter, which you can still buy in some online stores. Many people have complained that it doesn't work terribly well, which is probably why it was discontinued. And indeed, if you install it and try to fill the pen, the best you'll get is probably a third of the way up, no matter how hard you try. You could refill it with a syringe, but there's an easier way. Just take it out of the pen and fill it directly from the bottle. When you do that, you can get very close to a full fill. Still, even then, the full ink capacity is slightly less than that of a short cartridge, which is to say, not that great. I'm happy to report that there's a relatively simple solution that is similar to the one I used in the Koweiko Sport. If you haven't seen my review of that pen, I took a short international cartridge, cut it off right about here, and then, using silicone adhesive, glued a silicone sack to the back, essentially creating a squeeze converter that holds quite a bit of ink. Unfortunately, the Lilliput is too thin for that trick because cartridges just barely fit into them, so when you glue the ink sack over the cartridge, it doesn't squeeze into the barrel. The solution I have for that is that instead of using a cartridge, you can take one of these converters, they disassemble, and then, once again, using the silicone adhesive, you can cut one of these silicone sacks and glue it directly over the threads, which essentially creates a squeeze converter that's thin enough to fit into the barrel of this pen. Let me show it to you. Here it is. And by the way, I used a little bit of talc powder to make it slide in more easily. Now, because the ink sack here is smaller, it creates less of a vacuum and makes it a little bit harder to fill. But if you take this out and fill it directly from the bottle, it works great. You can get a complete full with a nice amount of ink, slightly more than an international cartridge. But now, let's return to singing the praises of the Lilliput. Koiko is known for having many nib options, from their basic steel nibs, to their premium steel nibs, to their gold nibs. But if you really want to improve the performance of this pen, here is what you should do. Like the Koiko Brass, this pen can be fitted with a number two semi-flex gold nib. This allows you to have the best of both worlds, the superior performance of a vintage semi-flex nib combined with a super sturdy modern pen body. This particular nib is from the highly regarded German brand Osmia, which honors the Koweiko's German heritage and performs brilliantly. Look for a nib that's approximately 6mm wide and 22mm long, and avoid nibs that are full flex since the plastic feed in the Koweiko will have problems keeping up. Also, keep in mind that swapping vintage nibs into modern pen bodies can be tricky, that it takes practice to find a nib of the exact size that you want, and since vintage nibs vary greatly, there is some risk that the swap might require some adjustment to the feed or might not work at all. That said, this is the fifth time I've successfully done this kind of swap, so while there is some risk that you might buy a nib that doesn't fit the pen, that risk is relatively small. By the way, there are a few tricks that will help you make this vintage nib to modern pen body adaptation easier that I'm going to show you in a future video, so stay tuned. So who is this pen for? Well, I think it scratches a number of itches. Like the Koweiko Brass, this is a pen that looks better the more beat up it looks, so it can be slipped into the tightest of pants pockets and it doesn't matter if that pocket is filled with keys or a bunch of other tools. That durability also makes this pen ideal for a messy studio table, though it's so small that I sometimes have a hard time finding it in all the clutter. Furthermore, its size and durability allows you to put it in places a fountain pen would usually not go, such as the inside of a little watercolor set, like this one, or the inside of a pouch filled with travel brushes, like this, or in a case that's so packed with stuff that absolutely nothing else will fit into it, like so. 
This is a surprisingly comfortable little pen that will be a welcome addition to your sketching arsenal that happens to also look quite awesome. I hope you found this review of the Kaweco Lilliput in Copper useful. If I convinced you that this is something you absolutely cannot live without and you want to support my channel, please make your purchases at Goldspot Pens through my affiliate link below. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have questions or comments, leave them below and I'll be happy to respond.